गाइस आई एम यशवर्धन मारदा टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग फ्लूइड्स सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट टॉपिक व्हिच इज पास्कल्स लॉ ऑफ फ्लूइड ट्रांसमिशन सो दिस लॉ बेसिकली स्टेट्स दैट द प्रेशर एक्सर्टेड एट एनी पॉइंट ऑन एन इनक्लोज्ड सिलेंडर इज ट्रांसमिटेड इक्वली इन ऑल डायरेक्शंस सो लेट अस लुक एट द प्रूफ ऑफ दिस लॉ दिस इज एन इनक्लोज्ड सिलेंडर Let's say a force FB acts on this portion. And a force FA acts on this portion. And a force FC acts on this portion. So when we resolve its uh, rectangular components, we have this right here is FB. it makes theta angle here this is fb cos theta and this is fb sin theta so fb sin theta is equal to fc equal and opposite vectors and similarly fb cos theta is equal to fa so we can also say that from this equation the for from the first one we can say that ab sin theta ab is the area of this section a a is the area of this section and ac is the area of this section so ab sin theta is equal to ac and from this second equation we can say that AB cos theta is equal to AA. This is the third and this is the fourth equation. Let us divide the first and the third equation and see what we have. Dividing one and three, we get we basic sin theta sin theta gets cancelled out, so we get so we get FB by AB is equal to FC by AC. so pressure is nothing but force upon area so this can be pressure at b is equal to pressure at c now let's see what do we get when we divide 2 and 4 so dividing the equations 2 and 4 cos theta gets cancelled out so we have fb by ab is equal to fa by aa so again pressure at b is equal to pressure at a so from this we can see from this with this equation right here and this equation right here we can say that pressure at a is equal to pressure at b is equal to pressure at c and this is the proof of pascal's law of fluid transmission let us look at uh, one of the applications of this law so let's say we have a vessel here let us say a force 2f acts on this portion let us say a force f by 2 and this right here f by 2 acts on this portion and the force f acts on this portion So let us say that this has a cross section area a this portion so we know that pressure should be equal at all these points at all these cross section areas so here pressure is force upon area at this point pressure is force upon force upon area so the area here would again have to be a by 2 to make the pressure force upon area so here again the pressure becomes f by 2 By a by two, which is into when we reciprocate it, into two by which is f by a only. So the pressure has to remain the same. That's why the area here will get halved because the force is also halved. Similarly, uh, the force here is doubled, so the area will also be doubled. So pressure here will be 
2f upon 2a which is nothing but again f by a so we can say that pressure at let's say this point is 1 the surface this is 2 and this is 3 so pressure at 1 is equal to pressure at 2 is equal to pressure at 3 And also this cylinder is obviously filled with a fluid. So this is one of the applications of this law. Let us, let us understand the next uh, topic which is terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is nothing but the maximum uh, constant velocity acquired by a body falling through a viscous medium. So we will have to derive its formula. So let us say that this is a cylinder filled with a non uh, filled with a viscous fluid. This is a body which is falling through this viscous fluid. The weight of the body will act downwards, while the up thrust force and there will be a uh, viscous force. So uh, viscous force is actually six pi eta r v. Vt here is the terminal velocity, eta is the coefficient of viscosity and uh, the up thrust force is nothing but the weight displaced uh, by the liquid itself. So that will be mg and this is mass of the liquid. So we know that uh, density is equal to mass upon volume. So mass is equal to volume upon density, volume into density. So volume of the liquid we can say it's 4 by 3 pi r q. Uh, into density, let's say density of this liquid is sigma, so uh, volume into density into g. This is the up thrust, and the weight is the weight of the uh, body which is falling, which is mass of the body into g, which is again mass is volume into density. The volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube density, let's say, of the ball is uh, rho into g. So now uh, we will get the terminal velocity only when the weight equals to the up thrust and the uh, viscous force. So weight here is 4 by 3 pi r q rho g is equal to the up thrust is uh, 4 by 3 pi r q sigma g plus 6 pi eta r v t. Now we need to calculate 6 pi, uh, we need to calculate the terminal velocity. So let's just bring everything on the other side. So we have 6 pi eta r v t is equal to 4 by 3 pi r q g and the density now subtracted. Now uh, we can cancel pi by r square and so we get vt is equal to 4 r square g density subtracted upon 3 into 6 into eta yeah and this is 2 3 the 6, 2 2 the 4. So Vt is 2 by 9 r square density subtracted g upon eta. So this is the formula for the terminal velocity of a body falling through a viscous medium. Let us understand one of its applications. Uh, let's say there is a cloud here. And uh, many, there are many raindrops that are falling. Uh, let's say the radius of one ra raindrop is r, and let's say there are n raindrops, and they uh, all these n raindrops combine to form a big raindrop. So uh, when these n raindrops combine to form a big raindrop with radius capital R. The volume will obviously remain the same. So 4 by 3 pi r cube into n is equal to 4 by 3 pi capital R cube. This is the volume of the n raindrops and this is the volume of the uh, bigger raindrop. 
So the volumes will remain the same. So we can cancel 4 by 3, 4, 4 by 3 pi from both the sides. We get R by R whole cube is equal to N and R over R is equal to N raised 1 by 3. Now the terminal velocity of uh, one raindrop from these n raindrops the terminal velocity of one small raindrop is 2 by 9 r square density subtracted g upon eta and the terminal velocity let's say this big vt or let's just say vt dash of this bigger raindrop is 2 by 9 capital r square capital R is the radius of the bigger raindrop and small r is the radius of the small raindrop density subtracted g upon eta now when we calculate vt dash upon vt we get uh, 2 by 9, 2 by 9 is cancelled this thing all the same so we get r upon r capital R upon small r whole square and this when we uh, whole square it we get n raised 1 by 3 whole square which is n raised 2 by 3 and this is vt dash upon vt so from here we can calculate suppose let's say the terminal velocity of uh, the uh, one small raindrop let's say is uh, 10 meter per second so now uh, when we put this 10 meter per second here we can calculate the terminal velocity of the bigger raindrop which will come out to be vt dash is equal to 10 n raised 2 by 3 meter per second now n, n can be n number of droplets whether, whether it is 2 3 4 or 5 so from here we get this uh, we get this formula for calculating the terminal velocity of uh, one big raindrop when there are when the terminal velocity of one small raindrop is 10 meter per second and there are n small raindrops let's move on to the next topic the equation of continuity so the equation of continuity basically say, uh, states that uh, during the streamlined irrotational flow of an incompressible and non-viscous fluid through a pipe of varying cross-section area, uh, the product of the uh, area of cross-section and the normal velocity of the fluid always remains constant. So now I have said a bunch of things but let us understand what it actually means. Uh, what I mean to derive is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 the product of the area of cross section and the velocity of the fluid remains constant so let us take a pipe and this pipe is of varying cross section area we can say that the area is not same let us say that through this area, let's say A, and this is the area B. Cross section A, area of uh, through the through this A, area of cross section is A1 and velocity is V1. Through B, it is A2, area of cross section and velocity is V2. So now we know that the mass of the liquid will obviously remain the same. Mass of the liquid flowing through A and B. So we can say that m1, let's say the mass of the liquid flowing through A is m1 and this right here is m2. m1 will always remain to be equal to m2 because mass never changes. So we know that density again is equal to mass upon volume. So mass is equal to volume into density. This is volume v1 and density let's say rho1 is equal to v2 rho2. The densities will, always, or will also be the same here because the, it's flowing through the same uh, medium. It is, a no, it is an incompressible uh, medium. So the densities will remain the same. So we can cancel out the densities. Uh, know that, just know that V1 small here is the velocity and capital V1 is the uh, volume. Volume is equal to area of cross section into length. A1 into L1 is equal to A2 into L2. L1 is basically the length of the cross section. So we can say that the distance it travels through this cross section. So distance again we know that distance L1 here is equal to distance is equal to speed into time. 
So let's just we have already considered that the speed here is v1 and time let's say is delta t. Similarly for l2 the speed here is v2 and time is delta t. So when we plug in this we get a1 v1 delta t is equal to a2 v2 delta t. The time remains the same so we can cancel out the time and we get our equation of continuity which is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. Let us understand the next topic, Bernoulli's principle. So Bernoulli's principle basically states that the sum of the pressure energy, pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy per unit volume of an incompressible and non-viscous fluid in a streamlined irrotational flow remains constant along the streamline. So again, let us understand what it means. What I have just said. Let us again take a pipe. So this is a pipe of again varying cross-sectional area. Let's say this is A, this is B. Again A, the cross-sectional area let's say is A1, this is the velocity is V1 and for B it is A2 and the velocity is V2. So from the equation of continuity which we proved uh, just before this, we know that first thing we know that is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. Second thing, by the law of conservation of mass, we know that the mass of the liquid flowing through A that uh, goes into A will come out the same, the mass will not increase or decrease. So, no. By the law of conservation of mass, we get m1 is equal to m2. Again, mass is equal to volume into density. So, this is v1 rho1 is equal to v2 rho2. The uh, rho here is same, but we will not cancel it out. We will see why uh, with some time. Uh, this here is again volume. And volume is again area of cross sectional into length. So V1 is A1 into length is again this. So L1 is again the same thing V1 delta T and L2 is also the same thing V2 delta T. So A1 into L1 which is V1 delta T rho is equal to the uh, this thing uh, volume second is uh, the volume coming out through B is nothing but a2 and then l2 will be v2 delta t so v2 delta t rho and this whole is equal to m1 is equal to m2 from this m1 is equal to m2 is equal to a1 v1 delta t rho is equal to a2 v2 delta t rho we will not cancel the delta t rho and delta t rho uh, in this uh, so let's just take this as equation one um, so this is the by this is by the law of conservation of mass. Now third is the change in the kinetic energy. So this will be kinetic energy final, which is half m2 v2 square minus the kinetic energy initial, which is half m1 v1 square. And this, so the m here is same because m1 is equal to m2. So we can say that half. Let's just say m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m1 for now. And in brackets we can take v2 square minus v1 square. So we get from this, from m1 we have a2 v2 delta t rho. So we get half a2, let's just take a1 because it's m1. So half a1 v1 delta t rho and in brackets we have v2 square minus v1 square. This is the velocity only, this is not the volume. This is by the uh, change in the kinetic energy. Now, by the change in the potential energy, delta P, potential, it is potential.
from this point A the height let's say is H1 and from this point B the height let's say is H2. So the change in the potential energy is potential energy final which is at this point B that is mg h2 minus potential energy initial which is mg h1 again m is same so we take m, mg as common and we get h2 minus h1 and m here is again a1 v1 delta t rho so a1 v1 delta t rho g and in brackets we get h2 minus h1 now we have to uh, let's check the work done so work done is good this is a w net work done net this is basically work done on the liquid at a minus the work done by the liquid at b so that is p1 v1 minus p2 v2 here v1 is the volume so again volume is basically uh, area of cross section into length so a1 and l1 is v1 delta t v1 delta t minus p2 and v2 is a2 delta t a2 sorry a2 v2 delta t now we take a, now we take a1 and a1 v1 delta t is equal to a2 v2 delta t from this equation from the first equation so we get we can take a1 v1 delta t as common and in brackets we have p1 minus p2 so this is the w net the work done is basically equal to the sum of the kinetic change in the kinetic energy and the change in the potential energy so the work done which is a1 v1 delta t p1 minus p2 is equal to sum of the change in the kinetic energy which is half a1 v1 delta t rho and in brackets we have v2 square minus v1 square plus now the change, uh, change in the potential energy which is a1 v1 delta t a1 v1 delta t rho g and in brackets we have h2 minus h1 we can see that a1 v1 delta t is common from like both sides so this is basically p1 this is basically p1 minus p2 is equal to half of rho brackets v2 square minus v1 square plus rho g h2 minus h1 now we have p1 minus p2 is equal to 1 by 2 rho v2 square minus 1 by 2 rho v1 square plus rho g h2 minus rho g h1 so just bring all the terms with one as subscript on one side and two on subscript uh, on the other side so we have p1 plus 1 by 2 rho v1 square plus now this term rho g h1 is equal to we take p2 and on the other side so we get p2 plus 1 by 2 rho v2 square plus rho g h2 so we can see that the sum of the pressure energy the, kinet, uh, the kinetic energy and the potential energy per unit volume is constant so Bernoulli's theorem is P plus 1 by 2 rho v square plus rho g h is equal to constant This can be a bit overwhelming, but it's quite interesting in fact. So from Bernoulli's principle, we had P plus 1 by 2 rho v square plus rho g h is equal to constant. Now, like how did we get this? Uh, it is sum of the pressure energy. So pressure energy is basically PV. 
pressure into volume plus kinetic energy as we all know half mv square plus potential energy we all know as mgh so this is constant now uh, bernoulli's principle but stated that the sum of the pressure energy kinetic energy and potential energy per unit volume so we need to divide it by volume throughout then then only it will be per unit volume so volume volume gets cancelled we get p plus mass upon volume is density which is rho 1 by 2 rho v square plus mass upon volume is rho which is rho g h is equal to constant so this was the actual meaning of the uh, pressure energy potential energy and kinetic energy per unit volume let us move on to the last topic which is uh, excess pressure inside a liquid drop so before understanding this we need to understand what is surface tension so we just need to understand its formula we don't need to get into too much depth so surface tension is denoted by sigma and this is equal to force upon length and it is also equal to the work done upon the increase in the area this is the area increase in area so now let us look at a liquid drop this is a liquid drop and there is excess pressure inside it so pressure is being applied at all directions let us say the original radius of this liquid drop was capital r and when pressure is being applied at all directions it becomes slightly bigger through dr distance this is dr so uh, the work done in uh, making this droplet bigger due to the excess pressure inside it is work done is equal to we all know force into displacement so force is nothing pressure is equal to force upon area so force is equal to pressure into area this is pressure into area into displacement is dr and this pressure is this this pressure is the excess pressure so work done is equal to the excess pressure into area area is the initial area of the liquid drop which is 4 pi capital r square dr this is our first equation from this formula of surface tension we know that sigma is equal to the work done upon the change in area so from here when we calculate work done we get that sigma and this is the change in area or the increase in area so increase in area will be a final minus a initial so work done is equal to sigma a final is 4 pi r plus dr whole square r plus dr because the final final area will be whole this the dotted line uh, or in the entire area is closed within the dotted line So that is r plus dr whole square minus 4 pi capital r square. Okay, I'm writing this here now. So work done from this we get this is sigma 4 pi a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2 ab 2 r dr minus 4 pi capital r square. So now work done is equal to sigma dr square. Dr itself is a very small change in radius. So very small means like it is like zero point zero 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 one. So when we square this, it will not become bigger. It will in fact become small, more small. So this will become like more. It will when we square this, it will become very really small. So we can neglect this value. So R d R square can be neglected, and we have R square plus two R d R minus four pi R square. So work done is equal to sigma. This is four pi capital R square plus eight pi R d R minus four pi capital R square. This gets cancelled. So work done is. 8 pi sigma r dr. This is the second equation. From the first and the second equation, when we equate it, we get 
the excess the excess pressure inside a liquid drop which we need to calculate multiplied by 4 pi r square dr is equal to 8 pi sigma r dr so pi pi gets cancelled 4 2s are 8 dr dr gets cancelled and r r so we have t excess pressure excess pressure is equal to 2 sigma upon r so this is the excess pressure inside a liquid drop this is 2 sigma by r because a liquid drop has only one free surface when we have when we say the excess pressure inside a soap bubble for example so there will be two free surfaces in that so the area will get multiplied hence the excess pressure the excess pressure this is inside a soap bubble this will be equal to it will be get it will get multiplied by 2 because it has two free surfaces so it will be 4 sigma by r um, that's all for this topic fluids i hope you all enjoyed it um, please like share comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet and i'll see you all in the next video thank you